Lord Tybalt Crakel had heard of Lord Kevin through his father, Lord Roland, one of the men who had led the charge into the Red Keep during Robert's rebellion. Yet the young boy that Lord Roland had met had grown now into a man, one of the most powerful men in the Westerlands, and a member of Lord Tywin's council. Yet he had never come to meet with Lord Tybalt. That changed after a personal invitation was sent. An invitation and a proposition, all in one. That is what had led to the two, the snake and the boar, to meet at Craig Hall, enjoying a meal and discussing the success in the Westerland's war against the Greyjoys. Seeing how much you love war as a boy, I'm surprised you didn't come with us to fight the Greyjoys. Many a man earned a title by raiding Pike. Lord Tybalt laughed, the fat man finishing off his wine. I'm even told they're soon to breach the main gates, and we'll leave with every little piece, artifact, and bit of gold they can find. It'll be a mighty day. Oh, I have all the glories and titles I could ever need. Let younger men earn their trophies. Kevin spoke with a charisma in his tone. He was cautious with what he ate, still having so much food in front of him from their original course. A pick-eater, it seemed. I earned my titles alongside your father, then I earned the rest through hard work, blade, and steel. From here, I shall continue to earn titles. I shall continue to prove myself useful. Which is exactly why I expect you asked me here, no? <laughs> well... Not foolish to put two and two together, no? The Lord laughed, leaving some of the boar's head laying before him. You've a son. A smart, capable son. One who I'm sure will be as mighty a lord as you. And I have a daughter. A bright spark, a radiant personality. And a chance for you to form a strong and a willing ally. And that's what you are, is it? Kevin laughed. A strong and willing ally. It's what I can be, provided you can be the same. To join with such a fine house as this, I'd be foolish not to. Kevin seemed to mean that honestly, too, as he grabbed his wine and took a sip. Your father and I met only once or twice, but he was a man who garnered clear respect, both on and off the battlefield. From what I hear, you continue his legacy. So, you agree to this union, then? Tevod asked with a laugh. No. Kevin responded, bringing some surprise at the Lord opposite him. At least not yet, huh? My son is not even ten in age, and your daughter is even younger. There may be opportunities yet to come for both our houses. Though when that age comes, I would be happy to discuss this again, to once more drink in each other's health. Indeed, Lord Tybalt noted with a small frustration in his words. I cannot hide my upset at your decision, though... I will not doubt your logic. Do I believe I may still hold a way to change your mind? To show you that I always can and shall mean well to your family. Kevin stopped, intrigued by the mere concept of what Lord Tybalt spoke. He didn't speak, merely waving his hands to instruct the Lord to continue. My father was an honest man, and he gave an honest opinion, and someone did not sit right with him. And when your father passed... There was certainty in his mind that it could not have been done by a lonely man. Unless on the words of one of higher birth. Tybalt poured some more wine into his cup, his eyes locked with the other lord. There is a certain amount of gold required to make a man so foolish that they would raise blades against a man like your father. And my father knew where to look. He looked to see who had moved gold and where. He looked to see what sort of money was being spent. And... Kevin was interested, his hand gripped to his seat. Well, he could never give a true and a definitive answer. He had names, but there was no clear sign of motive to clear such a thing down. Though I expect you'd be better at suited to figuring motives in my father. Well, he of course ever prioritized the search. It was merely a it was a small thing to irk him. He held a sort of care for you, though I never understood it and the idea of a knight of Lannister being killed in such lowly manners. <laughs> and you would be willing to grant me the names he did have then? Kevin questioned. 
shorten my list from all of the Westlands to perhaps just a name or two. Well, far more than two. Though yes, I would be willing to part with the names to my newest ally, provided such a proposal could be found. Tybalt smirked and drank his goblet, laughing heartily at such an idea. Kevin did not respond. He sat there in silence, not once breaking eyes with the man opposite him. His fist clenched around his cup as he considered the proposal. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Crusader Kings 3, a game of thrones, where we are continuing as a Lord Kevin of House Crate, the Lord of the Fang. And we are now four episodes in, and I want to say thank you for people who are continuing to watch. You know, we're, we're losing a little bit, but it's becoming clear the people who are watching, you guys are enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. This is the most fun I've had with CK3 in a while. Which is saying something, because CK3 is a little bit of a mess. Definitely prefer some other Paradox games to this, but I want to thank you guys. This has been a lot of fun so far, a lot of fun. And uh, there's definitely uh, a want from me to continue this, and there's clearly a want from you guys to continue this. So please, please do like keep up your uh, your comments. <laughs> it's nice seeing you guys get engaged. If you ever have like a suggestion of a name you want for a night, or a little story idea that you have, uh, please, please do let me know. I want to get you guys involved in this story. And I want to let you guys know a little bit about the other game I'm doing. Uh, I've mentioned that... So the the whole thing with um, the Harren Hall story I was doing uh, in CK2 is I ended up kind of just not enjoying the game and it sort of dropped from my mind because that region, while it has a lot of fun and I enjoyed the sort of curse storyline, it was really difficult for me to work a story in my mind with how that house was going. Whereas here, I feel like even just to have the story of a house like House Crate in general, where we have this intentional focus on maybe taking one, you know, house. Deed, my very first campaign was very honor focused and these guys are a lot more on maybe the devious side although that could completely change with uh, our first son here lord kevin he already is charming so maybe he may you know could still be intrigue but maybe he's more of a charmer rather than a bit of a <laughs> fighter and a aggressive sort so that campaign it, I may do one or two episodes, but I'm kind of done with that. I do want to return to CK2, and I think I've mentioned we may be looking at this region for a CK2 return. And it could be happening sooner rather than later. Um, it may not be a weekly series, but I've sort of decided I do still want to do intros and the storybook sort of telling for that. I was thinking maybe I could just do a normal CK2 series, but CK2, now nah, it deserves a proper storybook. So the, the videos for that will be maybe bi-weekly, but they will be coming. Uh, I've already started working on the first one, but my priority right now is Lord of Kevin. And after those minutes of rambling are done, <laughs> let's actually uh, get to, to Lord of Kevin. So with the Fang secured, part of our interest is going to be once more investigating the mystery which has sort of permeated his life. You know, he's 35 now, he's a man of his own, um, sort of approaching the age of his uh, his father, and his father died, although his father was closer to, I believe, about 43, 44 when he passed. So still, still 10 more years until then. But you know, Lord Kevin has a ripe opportunity here to, to learn more about his father's death. I mean, there's still traces out there and we're going to be investigating them. Of course, I know the story. I wrote the story, guys. But there's aspects to it that I am going to let you guys help me. Uh, work with. Uh, there'll be opportunities where I'll be asking you guys where we investigate next, what happens next, that sort of thing. So this is going to be a bit more dynamic. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to finding secrets. So we've tried Castle Rock and found nothing there. So what we're going to do is we're going to be trying to find secrets in all of the other lords. And in fact, which lord do we start with? My thoughts were probably one of the ones near us. So, Fair Isle, Crag, Crake Hall, 
Uh, Runridge. Although these ones are probably a bit more far away. I think we'll start with Fair Isle. Because Fair Isle is right next to us. And then they'll move up to the crag. I saw some of you guys suggesting, or one of you guys specifically suggesting marrying into the, the Craig Halls. Which, with my eldest, I don't mind that idea. He is, you know, not an age yet will be because of Centering Petrova. But when we are, marrying into the Craig Halls makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, there's a connection with House Craig Hall. Uh... With with us being present, both us and uh, Tibot being present at uh, the sack of King's Landing, and seeing the King's Slayer together, so there's a connection there. Definitely something worth looking into. So we can sit on our gold, sit on our laurels for a little bit, uh, build up a bit of income. I don't have much intent on expanding here. I want to just sit for a while and let things move. I've seen you guys say that if I do take Vickery. I should let them retake their home uh, because pe people like the rain story. They want to see the rains live. I'm fine with that. Um, personally, the whole Vickery's a rain things uh, has never been directly said in the books at all. And I, I think, you know, it makes more sense than not. But it is worth noting, you know, that the ball they have this flag with these balls and these um, lines are only sort of guesses. Um, they, they could be more close to the balls of Krakul, for all we know, because we've this it's a semi-canon uh, as portrait. But it makes it makes sense the region-wise, you know, very close to Castamere, that this could be a bastard house. So we'll, we'll keep them around if we do take them over. I'm going to keep fabricating a claim here, but I don't... I don't especially care for expanding there. I want to be quite slow with the expansion. If the most I would take would be up to Castamere. And even then, I think that's an excessive need of land. Oh, our new daughter. Let's give her a good Westerlands name. Teresa. Wilhelmina. Sarissa. Go with Sarissa. And so we have Emma, Taisha, and Sarissa now. How oh, fun. Lady Jane. Ooh, Jane Goldengrave having a turning. This one could be worth visiting. The, the Goldengraves are a very, very rich house. House, sorry, House Rowan. Sorry, House Rowan are a very, very rich house. Rowan of the Goldengraves. Uh, one of the sort of elder houses of the Reach. Uh, who, in some way, have had, at times, more control than even the Tyrells have, have had over the Reach. Very well respected house and a very wealthy house in that region as well. I think it could be worth going just as we're going to be sitting here, just sort of waiting for the rest of the time. So, I've yeah, it's not too far, it's just outside the Westerlands. So, we may as well visit this tourney as well while we're still in our prime. Case okay, so keep a slowly gaining back control of just incredible wealth there compared to the rest. I'm not qualified for the recital. I'm not good with the recital, am I? Which one is it? Is it wit? Um do, do, do. Some people have okay wit, but nobody's got like a significantly better wit than me. It could be worth going for this then. Get our score up a bit. I mean, our horse skill has got incredibly good. We've been doing a lot of horseback um, hunting. Definitely could help us in the horse race. No no man-to-man -man fighting here. But there's also no real need for man-to-man -man fighting. So we can sort of just take the uh, take the chance. This this was a, a very interesting... Ooh. Well, performing his duties to my spy master, Eden has uncovered a secret held by Lord Mark of Madarech. He schemed to have... A, ooh, a man who did die. So we discovered how he died. He murdered this man. Why? He's no great man. Just killed a random dude. I did not qualify. I'll pay, I'll pay to get in. <laughs> I'll pay to get in. I want to recite some poems. I want to do some uh, eight-mile raps against people. Yeah, Lord Lord Philip didn't deserve to be in anyway.
I don't think I won. People found me boring, apparently, according to this yawning man here. Lord Garrison came third, Lord Anders second, and Lord Eustace came third. Or came first. Let's, uh, let's get the skill increase here. Or the uh, chance of winning increase there. Because I like winning. This war is still 98%. And it's, I think it all relies on the fact that this siege is taking forever. There's another 19 months on that siege. Oh, my son Philip has been knighted. Of course, he's been disowned, but being knighted is very good. He he serves as my knight. Still probably lives within my uh, home as well. Because his, his disinheritance comes from the question about his mother. He He's the only boy born of my first wife. And so it's probably difficult to to ascertain if he truly is mine. You know, and it's probably best to just get rid of those those hushed whispers in the court quite quickly. Did I just... I made five good moves and then one good move and I blundered. What is this? Actual chess? You fool! You've made the ultimate blunder! Got knocked out in the first round. Well, he reached the guy who beat me reached the final, so maybe that proves I'm not absolutely awful at board games. If you lose the eventual winner, it softens the blow a bit. However, we do only have one chance of winning something here, and it is the horses. And I'm not—I'm not even qualifying for the horses. I'm nowhere near. Um, I'm surprised my horses aren't a lot higher. I would have thought that with how trained I am with, with steeds, my qualification threshold would be higher. It just seems like you can never automatically end up qualifying. Progress to victory is always just very, very low. I, I would much prefer if there was a bit more of a system around it. Okay, sh I, if I don't qualify there, I will be set. Okay, I did qualify. My horse is all set, of course, but at least there's nothing without a capable rider to control it. As a result, I found myself with three potential riders arrayed before me, all clamouring for the honour of being allowed to represent me. None of them seem like particularly outstanding candidates. All of them are either complete strangers to me and clearly just commoners looking for a chance. Am I not able to... Why are none of my knights available for this? Some of them came with me. I also... It, it also won't let me pick a specific one. It's... Okay... Press this button, which does random things. It's very, very weird that you don't participate in the race. And maybe if it was a joust, you would participate. I'm not sure if that's specifically how it works. Uh, I can knock him out the horse race, or I could take a 66% chance to re increase my score again. Let's try that. Okay, my score increased. My score decreased, rather. Okay, I don't stand much of a chance here. I don't know why, why a lot of these end up you just not participating in them at all, which <laughs> it makes sense in a way that, you know, Lords of Houses wouldn't participate in them. But only... I don't think it's completely true. I feel like Secondary Lords and Lords of other Houses would participate. There's precedent for it. You know, it's great houses that definitely would not uh, be participating in an attorney like this. Like, you wouldn't see Tywin participating, but you would see Jamie. Although, obviously, Jamie's not the heir. Yeah, I think the heir doesn't always. Uh, that You know, you don't want to risk your heir, so that's why often heirs don't end up participating in these things. Because they are. They are risky. Just tell it to that guy who got his face. Bashed in by a uh, daemon. Although I feel like anyone who's in a tourney with daemon Targaryen is going to get their face bashed in. So that was sort of like a self warning. They're probably told. By the way, don't don't upset this guy because if you do, he's going to beat up like twenty people. <laughs> uh. 
a search for a witness and a proper caravan master. We'll spend a little more to get the good one, which probably means I won't be able to afford a caravan master. He's excellent, but he costs 60. No, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with what we have for now. Okay, Sanford just randomly also quit his job, even though I didn't pick anyone. Um, oh, I have an excellent. My son, Philip, is excellent. Wonderful. And then, wet nurse, wet nurse. Doo -doo -doo. I feel like I probably passed by it like five times, but I'm very dumb. I almost definitely have. It's, it's been, yeah, it's been filled itself. I don't know why I did that. Um, I can imprison him with fair reason, so we'll do that. I love imprisoning people. And then I can either release them. Can I, can I maybe do a little, a little torture? Or do I have others to torture? Um, I could torture you. I told you. How wonderful. It just fills me with such joy. And then we can let you go free for money. <laughs> Get off the easy way. Sea Star is independent. I was going to say, why is, why is this like that? So the War of Snow is still in John's sorry in Ed's favor uh, representing John I don't want him to lose the opinion um I'll take the weak favor then I'll, I'll back my bishop in this this is very interesting because you'd imagine the north would, would really struggle here against the combined strength of the crownlands and the throne maybe they've not yeah it's all it's all holdings there's been no battles yet other than these minor ones of like chamber tile. I'm sure when a battle comes, this this whole war's gonna change because the north the north just can't compete number wise with just with the the, the, the Iron Throne itself, let alone when you add it. Renly's men. And of course Renly's gonna be loyal to his uh his brother. Prince Dennis. Stannis with a male heir, interesting. Of course Robert can produce an heir. Oh finally, he won his war. Uh, I don't see a need to pay a visit to him. It's good he's back in the rock. He's 62 years old. The loathsome wolf of Clever Croak. Oh, a beast in the area. A bear sighting. Well, do I have the money for a hunt? I'll wait a bit. Save up a little bit and do a hunt. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do one more cycle on finding secrets. And if you def find nothing, then we'll move you on. Because in, in, in Kevin's mind, whoever did, whoever attacked his father couldn't have been at King's Landing. They couldn't have been someone who was at the sack of King's Landing. Obviously, it could have been on orders of someone who's at the sack of King's Landing. But, he, you know, it's hard to know who his enemies was, especially so, so separated from the event. He definitely had some enemies. Uh, specifically, you know, he, he'd done work in this sort of region around the Golden Tooth and had done work in this sort of region. You know, as a, as a man working for the Lannisters, there's no doubt that everybody in the whole of the Westerlands would, would at least know of him or have some sort of disagreement with him. And he sort of man that when you have a disagreement with would never say no, which Kevin could be said to be the same at this point. He's a very finicky man. He does not like to be Dissuaded or annoyed. He's not very familiar with House Westerling, though. Frag would be a good one to put next. He, he's met with the Farmans before. Obviously, he knows the Crate Calls, uh, knows House Swift, uh, has probably heard of House Payne. Lefford, Lefford's of the Lefords, and then, yes, Banefort would be the other one that would be known. So, ones like Ash. Uh, Ashmark and Lydon would be 
a little more of an unknown. I'll be extra vigilant. Right, let's plan a hunt and take out this um, bear and the maiden fair. Wait, I thought it was a bear, now it's saying it's a wolf. If it's a wolf, it's a wolf. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll just do a 76. We don't want to spend an incredible amount of money on it. Yeah, lots of people are coming. My master of the hunt is coming, which of course he would be. Be stupid if he didn't. Seek out the wolf. Should, I mean, it was, should be super easy to kill a wolf. Lord Rupert's out of this mount. My trader's vassal, Lord Garrison, made sure to bump into his horse, sending him tumbling to the ground. No one likes Lord Garrison. I can make him taste the belt. Or I can be a mediator. Um, We'll be a bit of a mediator. I don't especially like Lord Garrison anyway. I mean, I can revoke his title. But he'll be angry about it. Don't think he'd be angry if I murdered him, though, right? I mean, he's been enough of a problem for me in his time. Is he just... Has he done it again? He is. It's a separate event. He's just done it again. We'll mediate again. Just have his opinion of me go to zero, apparently. <laughs> Cornering the wolf. We shall ride after it. And get the peasants out of the forest. Hmm. I don't really want to spend that. We'll take a slight decrease on success. Ooh. How have the troops to stop us? Well, just on his wife, on Lady Alisan. Not on him. It's not worth it on his wife. Um, No chance of winning that. I always shoot it every time. Every single time I shoot it, every single time it works. And I'll keep the... Uh, the fangs again. My whole inventory at this point is just fangs and uh, claws. <laughs> Literally, it's no need for armor requests. I do save up for an antiquarian to to maybe get some uh, armor. Armor could definitely be, be something to consider, or maybe that's maybe something for a future generation. Like the the blade viper is already sort of like the the des the legacy. That will be left by Lord Kevin. You know, alongside the Fang and all of the the literal name of the house and all of that. But um could be that ne we leave the next generation to be the ones who create the armor and then the next generation creates uh, a shield and that sort of stuff. I do enjoy sort of a generational growth like that. Oh, my skin. Ugh. I always get discovered. No one ever lets me kill them. Where's the fun in that? Can I kill Tywin? Nah, I like Tywin. Lord Tyron still hanging about. Uh, I see. Yeah, Lord Kevin died ages ago, but Lord Lord Tiggit Lannister kicking around. Since he's a chancellor, look at that diplomacy. She can keep keep her tooth. Yeah, keep your tooth. I don't know what I would do with that tooth. Uh, you know, all honesty, I don't want to question why I would want to. <laughs> he's 10 now, he's, he's growing into his age. Is there a... Uh, no, only, only... Oh no, there is a daughter, Taisha Craighall. I'll keep an eye on, on, on Taisha. In fact, let's pin. Uh, we'll keep an eye on her. She could be a very good marriage candidate for... Oh boy. Where's Lord Adam? In Motley Hills. Oh, I took too long. The hunt's probably already started. Okay, that's fine. Can't hug every cat. And by that I mean can't hunt every cat. I, I, I meant to make a joke about the original, but I just said the original.
Mostly because it's a message I agree with. He doesn't want to hug every cat. Okay, very close to getting full control of case keep. Very good. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can we can stop you there. We'll move you on to, as I said, let's move on to the crag. I have interests in the crag. Evening reflections. Oh, I can be a poet. Oh, or a journaler. Journal that gives learning and stress loss. Poet gives diplomacy per level of fame. What's my level of fame at? Illustrious, is that first level? Yeah. So it'll basically be plus one or plus one. But this one also gives stress loss, whereas this one does... No, it gives it gives stress loss for less. Let's do, I think we'll go for poet. He, he's a well a well versed man, a well educated man. Definitely would be a poet. And we can get schema. We can now do two evil schemes at once. And I will I will actually move on from that focus to let's do a stewardship focus for his later years, because we want to build up the fang a bit. And I only really wanted schema because I felt that would fit. But what sort of schemes do I want to do? I can do some hooking, right? I can make some hooks. 90%, absolutely. And also, let's get a hook on... I want to get a hook on all of the other lords. See if I can uncover dirt on them. Child of my dynasty, Phillips had his first son. Um... Name him after me. <laughs> if I get to choose, I'm picking my name. Can't stop me. Even if that boy's going to grow up to inherit nothing. It's not his fault. It's just how it is. Hmm. My son would actually make probably a better master here, right? He can't be one. Why? Oh, because he's a. Does being a caravan master mean he can't be in there? Spies digging for secrets have been plaguing my court, and imagine my surprise to find they are in the ploy of your spy master. Put an end to this travesty immediately. Let's keep stupid. Anyone who acts like that when his when little birds get found, you know, suspicious. There's little birds in every court. If you don't have. Birds in my court, that's your fault, not mine. A foolish mistake to make, if you ask me. Which, I think we just get this all the time then. Maybe I was so wrong to judge the first son on the event, because it seems like everybody just gets this event. Um, blacksmiths make the most sense. I found no evidence at all. Wow. There'll be the twist if after all of that Lord Kevin is the one who's not mine. Because, I mean, he, he holds intently from his mother's blood. Must be very strong, um... Genius trait. Thank God he didn't get her warring star. That would have been annoying to deal with. <laughs> but, um... You know, when you inherit the hair of your mother, which all of the kids have, I didn't realise that Kevin was such a recessive gene here. But, um... It makes it hard to have solid proof. Strike a deal. The deal is, you build for me, and I, I maybe don't kill you. But that's a big maybe. All right, it worked super successfully. How wonderful! And I don't need to control anywhere, right? Nope, everywhere is at a hundred. Wonderful, let's trade some commanders then, actually. See if we get any good uh, knights out of that. Speaking of knights, let's have a look at who we have. Tibbet, 27 prowess. Garrison, also 27 prowess, but I wish he, he wasn't. <laughs> anyway, I'm 35 prowess, I'm the best prowess of the lot. Who wants to be regent? Genuinely, who are you? Shut up. Can I murder him? 
Ah, oh, it ended up scheme to fabricate a claim. We'll see if we can fabricate a hook, and if we can't, I'm going to murder that guy. <laughs> How dare he? Him be my region. Who is my region right now? Did I, did I set one? Because if not, that seems like something I should set. Oh, Emma has come of age. Wow, elusive shadow. Wow, wow, wow. Although he's, she's probably heading off to House Osgrey. Uh, Stag Hunt is the best. Uh, I don't care for Lord Leo's hunt. Lord Leo bores me. Let's see. Sounds like fun. Master of Arms gives you diplomacy. A Master of Arms gives you diplomacy? I, I did not actually expect that. I thought it would be much the other. It could get a court grandeur bonus, but I don't have anyone who could be. Like that. Interesting. Prestige per month if I get a personal champion. Genuinely, I'm, I'm so stupid that I forgot the whole reason I came here. But I do want to look at stuff. Oh, I wish I had a better antiquarian. I'll keep an eye out and see if anybody comes through who is one. You, the problem is usually with uh, antiquarians is my my wife would be an amazing sure. My wife's an incredible master of arms. Uh, the the problem with it is you usually have to be a level where you can have a court. So you know, okay, uh, once you're a king and you're able to have court, that gives you a lot of events about uh, antiquarians because oftentimes they will come through. You know requesting gold to commission a piece and you can actually use that to actually go you know what no you're not going to get a piece out of me you're actually going to get uh all my money and work for me <laughs> which is what i did with a with a bunch of excellent ones and i got some great armors out of it so i do not regret it at all but you know we're nowhere near a court level <laughs> we're a duke if we would want to be a king we'd even need to take the poor or literally all of the north and kevin dreams big but even he doesn't dream that big uh, yeah, we we will we will accept this marriage. It's it's a very logical alliance to have. She's married a, a lord, someone of importance and of renown. She'd be very proud of that title she now holds. We're just spreading spreading the uh, res the seed of House Crate, and the more we we spread sort of the blood, the more respected we will be. Because right now we're not respected at all. Just look at that renown. Nobody knows we exist right now. Can't blame them though. I must finish on Bloomeries. Oh, Bloomeries are our word for blacksmith, I was going to say. I was told that the Westland footmen here, which I've not stationed. Wow. Um, let's unstation you. Which one do they station in case keep? Let's station you in case keep instead. And I've been told these guys are definitely worth upgrading. I knew that, that the Westerlands were very good in battles. And I did assume a lot of it probably came down to these West uh, these Westerland frontmen. But I didn't actually... Let's not waste more time. I didn't actually take a full look as to why. But these terrain effects and these counters very, very, very strong. So definitely want to have a lot of those guys, men at arms in my army. Because if we're not expanding a lot, we still want to have a, a decent sized army. Like, if we compare it with the other lords. Two, three, four. Uh, just check they are. Yeah, so four dukes have more men than us. Let's get a tiny bit of opinion with them. Which, four dukes is is not a lot in the Westerlands. It's, it's you know... I'm I'm still sort of a middling lord here in terms of that power, but the fact that I'm on Tywin's council gives me gives me a lot of respect, which I otherwise would not have. And <laughs> we will definitely take it. Let us We're doing a lot of building, we'll get building costs done first and then we'll do tax man. Architect is what we really want here. We wanna be you know, we've done our, our evil wicked stuff for a little while. We want to build up the fang a bit, and then once we build up the fang, we can maybe go back to 
another one. Or maybe go for Hall of Body. Could really go either way in those old ages. Like, I do want Kevin to live a while here. But, you know, in this, in the Game of Thrones, you could die any day. There we go. Look, he is literally, as I said, as soon as War School came in, there was no chance. It's like, he still holds the War School from Occupied Holdings, but it doesn't matter against that battle score. That battle score is, is undefeatable. We actually have a rule in, in our roleplay game uh, that, that we guys are, are running, and you guys can check the description for a link to join that Discord. Come join us in our roleplay uh, multiplayer games. Lots and lots of people already excited for that one. Hopefully we'll have early, uh, news about that coming soon, but some stuff has to be sorted out. But um, when we do Robert's Rebellion, we, we have a rule, and it's just a rule about wars in general, that, you know, 100% war score in CK3 isn't really the end of a war, because it isn't logical. Like, Robert's Rebellion doesn't end until Robert's dead. It doesn't make sense that you can siege down a bunch of capitals and get 100% and Robert is still alive. Robert has to die for that. And inversely, you know, Eris is literally holed up in Kings in uh, the Red Keep. He never leaves the Red Keep. So Rhaegar may die. You know, Rhaegar definitely dies. In fact, Rhaegar's dead. You've sieged a bunch of land. But if you haven't taken the Red Keep, ball's not over. So it does... Um... I like the building influence, it does work, because you get you can get a strong scheme, a strong hook out of it. Lord Garrison's getting nothing out of me. Yeah, having having wars that are more sort of logical in that manner is is much uh in my enjoyment. I, I enjoy you know, I don't wanna have a game be overly policed, but I do these roleplay games and also this game for me, this this story I'm I'm making with CK3. I find it so much more enjoyable to tell the story than play the game, if that makes sense. So, for me, there's no love lost in, in rules like that. I think it just makes a lot of sense. I'm just going to keep saying, no, I don't want it, because I'm realising that, like, there's one day I am going to want it, and I'm going to be upset that I didn't do it earlier. But for now, I'm also happy just to continue developing. In fact, we will... We will. I think we, we we've done... It's, you know, this has been a, a, a soft episode. It's been a couple soft episodes, but I don't have a problem with that because Lord Kevin's been doing a lot of work here in the Fang, and there's been a lot of wars going on, and I'm sure as soon as this war is finished, which he's actually turning it a little bit here. Maybe maybe it's not completely over. But um, once those wars are finished, more wars are going to start up, and I can already know of a few locations where there's going to be a war. Taisha is coming of age, as is our son Kevin. And these two could be a very strong match if if Lord Craig Hall is so willing to have it. Could be a very, very uh, useful alliance to have. The Craig Hall's, you know, very powerful and um, there's a connection there. So I'd love to see that blossom. As we come to the episode, uh, end of the episode here, guys, I want to give you guys, as I mentioned, a little bit of, of a choice or a decision you guys can make in the comments about where we take the story of Lord Kevin next. So... Leave your comments about what you, you want Lord Kevin to do. So just to give you guys sort of a guidance, I, the path we could take is we could really focus in on, on his father. You know, he has the connections now. He could bring it up at a, at a council meeting of Tywin or could arrange a meeting with any of these lords. If you guys have an idea about how Lord Kevin should handle these steps next or if he should just abandon his father and focus on the Fang, leave a comment, explain your reasons why. Uh, from now on, comments I love, I'm going to post up on screen starting next episode, so you guys will, will have your comments in the episodes. So if you have a reason or like a good story that you want to tell with me, leave, leave your comments down below, and I'll see how they can merge with the story I have at the moment, because some stuff's cooking, and I hope you guys do enjoy it. Love your comments, love all the support on this, and I am so, so happy to be enjoying games again, <laughs> let me tell you that. Uh, please keep an eye out for the CK2 game. Um, and also, keep an eye out. I may be doing some streaming. Um, that's not confirmed yet. That's up, up in the air. I will definitely be doing videos of our roleplay game when that starts. And I'm also hoping to maybe do some EU4 or Victoria Free videos coming up soon. But those ones um, will be very sort of spaced out because I want to do a full campaign and edit it down into a single video or like into three videos rather than a, a, a Let's Play. I highly edited 
full storytelling Victoria Free experience is what I'm hoping for. And that'll be a lot of fun. So if you enjoy that time period, I think you guys will really enjoy those videos. But with Lord and Kevin's mystery still to be sold, but his wealth growing, his army growing, his family strong, wise, and loving, he should have everything he could want. Yet something tells me Lord Kevin just wants more, and the Westerlands is the perfect place to go for more. Please leave your comments down below about where we take this next. Thank you guys so much for all your support so far, and I shall see you guys in the next episode. Until then.